Hi guys, my name is Anuj Jindal. Welcome to my channel. Today we are going to talk about English test 3. So English test 1 and 2 answers have already been published and English test 4 has also been given to all the students. So you are expected to take English test 4 as soon as possible. In the meantime, I wanted to discuss all the essays of English test 3. So let's start with the discussion. A total of three essays were given and you had to write on any one of these essays. So what were the topics in case you don't remember them? Number one was rural tourism in India, steps required and expected benefits. What are the keywords here? Rural tourism in India, number one, steps required, number two and benefits, number three. The second topic that we had was agri-tourism in India, potential and challenges. Again, the keywords agri-tourism potential and challenges. So these are the keywords that you have to identify before writing the essay. So that is the first thing that you do whenever you decide to write an essay. And the third was how can India ensure universal quality health care for its citizens? Universal quality health care or universal health care for its citizens. How can India ensure that? So this was the third topic. Uh, I think this was the most popular one majority of the students wrote on this one and the second one was the second most popular the first one sorry uh, least number of students in fact I think only one or two wrote about agri tourism in India so let's start with the discussion and talk about the first one first rural tourism in India steps required and expected benefits first of all we will talk about the importance of rural tourism in India in the introduction as I have mentioned in the past videos also we talk about two things we mentioned the definition and we mentioned the importance of that topic so definition you define what is rural tourism and then you define or explain why does it hold so much importance in India right now and and then we directly jump on to benefits and steps required for the simple reason that we have to write an essay in only three to four hundred words so we don't have a lot of space to uh, create arguments and to expand our introduction. Okay, so we directly jump on to the expected benefits out of rural tourism in India. Now you have to keep this in mind that multidimensionality holds a lot of importance when we are talking about or when we are dealing with exams like RBI, Nabad or SEBI. So multidimensionality, you always have to keep, keep this in mind. It takes some time to get into this mode of multidimensionality to adopt multidimensionality but once you do uh, the task of uh, scoring high in uh, essay becomes very easy so let's talk about expected benefits from multiple dimensions one by one gdp push that is the first one gdp push in rural areas by creation of demand that is the uh, most obvious expected benefit out of rural tourism both by tourist and also by local population so when local population or tourists decide to arrive or decide to spend their money in rural tourism to visit these rural areas for tourist purposes tourism purposes then it directly gives a push to gross domestic product in these rural areas and also gives a push uh, to incomes of people in the return creating demand both by the locals as well as by tourists okay so that is the first important expected benefit limit migration from rural to urban areas just imagine you are uh, living in a rural area and the income is good there is a lot of tourist activity there are other industries which are thriving why would you want to move out to an urban area you see a lot of migration happening these days from rural to urban areas if you are living in delhi or in mumbai or in such other mega cities you would see poverty everywhere people living in slums everywhere on the road people living you, you get out at 12 p 12 o'clock in the morning uh, and you would see or 12 o'clock at midnight and you would see people sleeping on the pavements everywhere all those are what all those are migrants all those are migrants who have been pushed out of rural areas so if we create uh, tourist activities or tourist opportunities in rural areas the migration will reduce and that will result in reduction in pressure on urban administration and certainly better development of the entire country okay so that is another holistic uh, dimension of expected benefits out of rural tourism employment generation in rural India that is one of the most obvious ones 
could have been the first one as well the fourth one expected benefit is creation of better infrastructure in rural areas in order to satisfy the needs of tourists so if better toilet better public transport facilities better cleanliness better locals in terms of skill development of them all all these things are provided in rural areas that will result in overall development of uh, rural areas and development of infrastructure of local populace okay the fifth one is inflow of more foreign exchange in india because more rural tourism means more people coming out of the country from out of the country to these rural tourist areas and trying to explore them because majority of the countries advanced countries the people from there want to explore india the way india is so india lives in its villages that was said by mahatma gandhi why not exploit that why not use that why not make it a strength rather than keep it as a liability okay so that can actually result in a lot of foreign exchange inflow for india and the sixth and very important one increase in tax revenue as the incomes of people increases the tax base will automatically increase that will result in an increase in tax revenue so see i have discussed all these things from multiple dimensions not from a single dimension okay from economic point of view from social point of view from infrastructure point of view tax point of view fdi or foreign exchange point of view all these dimensions have been covered let's talk about the steps required number 1 better or basic infrastructure development in rural areas and connectivity with major cities so all these steps are actually flowing from the benefits expected so benefits you identify the benefits you automatically identify that in order to achieve these benefits on in order to have these benefits we need to take certain steps what are these steps flowing directly from these benefits okay skilling of the youth is another important step that is required better education of rural populace for better treatment and more safety to foreign tourists innovative ways like agriculture tourism health tourism organic tourism wildlife tourism eco tourism can be utilized effectively in rural india so that step needs to be taken through a policy change and also through better implementation of these tourist activities in rural areas and another step is to my, my market indian rural tourist market in a different and futuristic way to market it as a sustainable and environment friendly tourist destination so that is the uh, uh, step that needs to be taken uh, with respect to marketing of our rural tourism which can be taken effectively by the government okay so that can be the last step which can be taken once all these above steps have already been taken i hope you have understood this let's directly jump to the second topic agri tourism in india potential and challenges so what is the potential of agriculture tourism in india and what are the challenges uh, connected or related to agriculture tourism in india number one potential organic tourism forest tourism horticulture tourism all these are different kinds of tourisms related to agriculture that can be started in india on a large scale for example if you go to countries like australia or new zealand uh, 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 which are isolated from the world you would see that they are not heavily dependent upon manufacturing or services in fact they are advanced but at the same time they are heavily dependent upon farming the way they remain advanced while depending being dependent on farming is that they follow horticulture tourism extensively they follow advanced farming extensively okay so in uh, uh, in addition to being advanced in agriculture they are also using agriculture as a tourist destination or as a tourist attraction for people which is uh, benefiting the farmers indirectly to a huge extent okay the second one is additional income and exposure to the farmers so another potential that we have the question was what are the potential and challenges of agriculture tourism so what are the advantages potential means so advantages of agriculture tourism what advantages can agri tourism bring about it will bring about additional income and give a lot more exposure to the farmers when they talk with foreign tourists when they talk with you know indian tourist uh, coming out of different areas let's say a person from kerala going to kashmir and uh, involving in uh, let's say dry fruit agriculture or you know that kind of tourism they will get a lot of exposure third one is farmers becoming an integral part of tourism industry too that will certainly give them a push and bring them out of the poverty related with agriculture 
what are the challenges investment requirements to create agri tourist areas within the farms they it needs huge investments because once you are inviting tourists both foreign and indian you need that kind of infrastructure which is um, not not yet available so the government needs to take a step in order to successfully implement this linking uh, that needs to be taken second one is language problems for farmers are often unable to understand any language other than regional ones uh, farmers in the south southern part of the country do not understand hindi and english farmers in northern part of the country do not understand english at all so those kind of problems need to be taken care of but they are not very huge problems they can actually be taken care of very well through translators which will again create another kind of industry translating industry can also be exploited there the third one is most farms and farmers in india are marginal farmers who cannot adopt agri tourism so this is a major structural problem connected with the kind of farming that we have we have marginal farming small farming wherein uh, more than 85% of farmers in india are marginal small and marginal farmers and for them to adopt agri tourism is very difficult why number one because they do not have that kind of land and number two they do not have that kind of income and in both these uh, uh, scenarios the gov- government has to come in or ngos have to come in and solve this problem okay i hope you have understood the second topic let's talk about the third one how can india ensure universal quality health care for its citizens how can india ensure universal health care for its citizens so what are the steps required let's break it down further what the question is asking is what are the steps required in order to in order to achieve the reality achieve the objective of or make universal health care a reality steps required for what steps required for universal health care in india so what are the steps which are required number one universal health insurance to citizens that is the first step that is required you want universal health care you provide health insurance to everybody that is very important the second one is promoting alternative medicine like ayush because alternative medicine systems are more widespread especially in tier 2 to tier 6 cities so if you want to go into these cities you have to promote alternative medicine and at the same time regulate it third is public health care system the public health care system especially the primary health care system is in shackles in india and if you want to achieve universal health care you have to uh, you have to improve and you have to strengthen the public health care system especially the private health care system sorry the primary health care system improve doctor to patient ratio so internationally the accepted doctor to patient ratio is 1 is to 1000 the doctor to patient ratio for india that i found i did not believe in it because it was i believe better than 1 to 1 is to 1000 and therefore i did not take it but the point still remains doctor to patient ratio is very bad in india that means one doctor has to look after more patients than he should be looking after and that directly impacts the quality and therefore universal quality healthcare is affected here so the quality word comes into play here telemedicine uh, using the technology in order to ensure that everybody has access to some kinds of healthcare system uh, so technology becomes a point here that can also be a major step that can be taken public expenditure on health it should be about 6 to 8% of gdp but it is only about 4% when we combine central and state expenditure which is very less compared to the other developing nations and that needs to increase focus on prevention of diseases through pri- primary health centers so one major contribution of primary health centers is that it targets prevention of diseases rather than curing of diseases rather than curing diseases it targets or it focuses upon prevention of diseases and if you want to have universal quality health care you cannot keep focusing on treating people uh, once they have been diagnosed with any disease you have to try and prevent diseases from taking place you have to try and prevent people from getting affected by those diseases and that can happen only if you have a sustainable and an effective primary health care system which is not available in india so these are the major steps which are required in order to ensure universal quality health care system in india 
I hope you have understood all these essays and can write on these essays on your own if you are given these essays tomorrow. Okay, I want you to write on these essays if you have not written on them already. Uh, next, I will be discussing essay or test number four very shortly after you have majority of you have written the answers to those essays. Till that time, all the very best. Take care.